All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Make sure you're on mute, except for obviously Rodney and when Liam Wood joins us. Appreciate y'all joining again. Um, I know we had last Sunday off of Mother's Day, so we had a great time with their mother. My wife was extremely happy that we did spend some time together. Excited about tonight's um, Zoom meeting, but before I do, I wanna welcome our DDR members from all the way from China and then Canada and Mexico. So appreciate you guys, guys joining us this evening. Today's clips are going to be transition plays because I've great clips. Um, if it's your first time on, I'll quickly go over rules of engagement. Just we want as much dialogue as possible, as many questions. You can either unmute yourself, come on, ask a question, then go back on mute, or you can go do the chat. And we have some people there that can, can navigate through those and ask questions that you want. We've got five clips and then possibly two on the tail end we want to try to get out as as efficient as we can because i know everybody wants to go watch the last dance that's why we moved it up so with that um appreciate y'all being on and um, we'll get started i will show the clips twice game speed hope it doesn't lag i've done a better job of optimizing my screen and it seems to be helping a lot i also was able to send out the clips ahead of time to some folks as well and that's what we're going to try to do each week is that's been the biggest issue is that it glitches and lags so what we're going to try to do is get those clips to you maybe a few hours prior to the meeting and then you can actually watch them and that will help you give them feedback throughout the uh the meeting so again we appreciate you guys filling filling out the, the forms that really helps us that was the biggest feedback we got so we want to make improvements on the uh the, the clips and the films for you guys okay so let's jump into the clips rodney you ready to go my man sure all right yep. One more time, hope it's a little clearer for you guys. Ron, it's okay, you're in? Yeah, man. I'm okay. good. Okay. Okay. Okay, first about this play. Who, who's primary on this play? Let's say Lee. 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 Secondary defender. Oh, Lee. So can we run it back to where the dribbler is near the top of the key? Right there, stop. Okay, stop it right there. Who now is the lead referee? Because we have, we have both defenders that's on the ball beat. So now the lead should be refereeing where? Help. The lead should go right to that secondary defender. Throw in the paint. Throw in the paint. Correct. Now the lead has a perfect look at him. Now look, look at the eyes of the, the center referee. The center is looking at the dribbler or looking at the defender that's on the trip dribbler. And he picks up the he picks up the Defender, or he sees the crash more so than the defender, but the lead is, I, I deem the lead, he could be a, a little closed down, but since it was transition, I don't mind him being a little wide, but he picks up the defender right away. This, like I said, this is, this is a primary example of knowing your primary. So there is no way the center's whistle should be at the same time or beat the lead's whistle. Agree? Yes. 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 So now when we pick up the defender, when we pick up the defender, based upon what we said a couple of weeks ago, when we pick up the defender, when the when the offensive players oh sorry when the offensive player steps down and starts his upper shooting her upper shooting motion is the defender legal is the defender in a legal guarding position no 
No, she looks like she's late. She steps forward. She'll slide him over. Like she is not in a legal guardian position. So could we could you anybody tell me why the slide has a whistle on this plate and has it wrong? I think the center just sees that the defensive player took it square in the chest, didn't take it, didn't know how she got there, and that she was getting there late moving forward. She just saw the contact square to the chest and said, that's got to be a charge. I would say, but looking at it right now, the angle she has, she's kind of blocked. So I, I'd say she's probably guessing that that. She obviously guessed. Like I said, she refereed the crash. She did not see what the defender right. did. Only thing she seen was the bodies going to the floor. But if you notice, her, her fist is up already prior to the, the lead fist. So there is no way the slot should have a whistle before the kid lead on this play because her eyes transitioned the last two tenths of a second and this referee the crash. And if you tell right there from the from the lead position, he is absolutely on that play. It is his play all the way. Like I said, I like to see him a little closed down a little more, but I'm fine with it because he did pick up the defender. Now, can I interject here? I'm sorry? Can I step in here? Sure. Whether he was closed down or not, I feel like he was in a stance and set to accept the play when the C was still running and into transition. And I feel like the, the, the lead had a better way of accepting and taking the call on that one as well. Agreed. But here we have Fair. we have we have a double whistle. We have one referee calling the block, the other one calling the offensive foul. It is very important that we get eye contact on double whistles. Or can you roll it back a little bit? Sure. I'll tell you when. Slow mo. Oh, sorry, it's okay. It's coming, it's coming. It's all right. Stop. Keep going a little bit more. Hey, stop. Stop. Okay. If we talk about like the philosophy that we've been taking about the closest defender to you, if the lead officiates the first player, which is the secondary defender, and the slot helps out with the rear defender, the trail cannot help out at all. He is not. He is in no man's land and cannot officiate at all. The, the, um, the trail should be over here somewhere so that he can kind of see or help out with 21, and then possibly this official can help out with that player, and then this official can help out here because these are the three closest defenders. If we each pick up a defender where we're supposed to be in a dependable position, that will cover the play. But there's no way, I don't think, and Ronnie can chime in, that this center can see the entire movement, especially the lateral movement, of that secondary defender. Yeah, the, the center really never even picks up the defender. The, the, you know, it, it, it's almost like the other, the other defender sort of steps in front of her at the same time as well. So... She totally guesses on the play. All, like I said, all she did was referee the crash. She sees player go to the floor, and she immediately calls a offensive foul. Like I said, we don't guess. And like I said, if we referee the last two tenths of the play, she never even saw that defender take that step over. She just saw the crash. But here, the important part is we have double whistles. Referee, your primary, because if I know that's not my primary and I do not hear a whistle from the lead, then I can come up with a, a whistle, whether I'm guessing or what. But we have players on the floor, too much contact, got to have something. But there is no way my whistle will beat 
to lead to whistle. Just to, because all I'm saying right now, if we, if we go back a couple, if we go back to put, put the dribbler at the top of the key, about right there. Well, come, come back a little more, come back a little more. I want to see when the lead gets to the baseline. About right there. Right, right now when I'm running, when I'm, when I'm in transition, whether I'm the slot or the lead, all I'm doing is trying to figure out which player can hurt me. Now, you know the lead cannot see the defender on the, this company that is beat, right? The backside defender. Right now, I'm saying, who can hurt me? So I'm saying, black has the ball. I'm watching white. I'm watching white. I'm watching white. That's all I'm looking for is white, white, white. That is what I'm saying in transition. And right now, I got the white player that can hurt me. And if the, if the slot, if the slot was refereeing the same thing, it would have been like, who can hurt me? This backside defender. That's the only one that can, that, one, that they have an open look at because they were looking at that defender up the court. The center was looking at that defender all the way up the court. Or should have been looking at the dribbler all the way up the court. So if you have, if you, if you referee the defender that can hurt you, and like I said, in transition, I'm always talking to myself. Black has the ball, I'm watching white, I'm watching white, I'm watching white. And that makes that play so much easier because the lead gets to a position, he gets set, and his eyes is on the defender. And he sees exactly what the defender does. But here, like I said, we have double whistles. You gotta make sure that you make eye contact with your partner. It's not about stealing the play or having the best signal or selling the play. It's like, I have a whistle for my league because right now, if I'm in the center, I'm expecting a whistle from my lead. Even if I don't hear the whistle, I'm expecting that whistle from my lead. So there's no way I'm just gonna signal, turn, and start the report. I'm like, I'm assuming that my, whist, my, my lead had a whistle. The other thing too, guys, you gotta remember one thing. <clears throat> we always talk about this. How many times have you seen the lead probably in this area here stop or does not make it to the baseline. As you can see here, this lead official gets to the baseline, squares up to receive the play prior to the POC, the point of contact. So he's not moving, his eyes aren't moving, he can adjudicate the play. A lot of times we don't get to that baseline and we're making a call on the run and we possibly, if it's a bang bang play, we'll get it incorrect. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 So the philosophy that we always talk about at DDR is that if you've played baseball before, okay, you are the runner that just hit the ball, and this is your first base, is the baseline. you got to run through first base, square up, and receive the play. Take that mentality run through the baseline as fast as you can, square up, get into your starting position, and accept the play, which is going to get you in a much better position and a much stationary position and the best word, a much dependable position. Okay? That's it. Any other question? I have a question, but I just want to open to anybody. Anyone else have a question on this? Anything else to add to it? So, Rodney, I have a question. So, on this, do they have a double whistle? Obviously, as a blarge, we have a, uh, a block and an offensive foul. What, what can the crew do better in this situation? Obviously, everything you've talked about, but the center comes out, signals, and reports before the lead has a chance to do it. Um, do you come out with a double foul, or do you just go with, with what the center has? Just curious your, your take on this. Uh, uh and and our league it's a double foul you, you give a foul to a personal foul to both players and it, if you jump ball it's going to circle any two and, you, and mark you have you have to determine what your high school rule is and i know the nc2a men's is, is almost the same as the nba uh, but i think they go to the arrow or something like that 
But once you NCA, you have to. I'm sorry. I said in NCA, it is the arrow. But you have to report both fouls. Correct. Yes. Once you show, you have committed to that, and both of you guys showed. And so, what is the high school rule, Mark? So the high school rule is you go double foul, and then this would be point interruptions because because they missed it. We're going to go to possession hour. If she would have made it, the basket would have gone in. Would have given the ball to the baseline to the other team. But you're basically going double foul point interruption. NCA this. women, it's different though. NCA women, we're going to we're going to get together. We're going to say that the primary whistle should have been the leads, so the leads call would have prevailed, and it would be a block and two shot. Yes. So I have a. I think I'd like to clarify a little bit on Mark's question because I think Mark was more or less asking, let's say that the, the lead would have picked up that the center had called an offensive foul, and now he just kept his arm up. Would you want to go have a discussion or just go with the offensive foul and then later talk about that? rather than Because if you don't give an, a, a preliminary signal as a block from the lead, you could potentially just go with the charge and then just leave it as it. Is that kind of what you were asking more or less, Mark? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, there, there are many factors in, in our game that I would take into consideration. I, you know, we're, we're talking about second period here, 349. I can't see the other score. Um, depending on what, the, what was happening in the game, yeah, the, the, the lead could have just ate the play because the – center had already given a signal and he just has a fist so he could have just said okay we're going with the offensive foul versus coming up giving the block signal again if you make eye contact with your partner if you make eye contact with your partner you would notice like and me personally like i said depending on what was going on in the game time and score i don't i don't really like to use that term time and score because I don't want to make it seem like we're manipulating the game, but if this was a gamer, no, we would definitely have to go jump ball in the circle 82. But you can, as a lead, in this situation, I don't, I, like I said, I, I don't know what was going on in the game. Could have just ate the play and just said, okay, we're going off as a foul. But let's say, for example, that's going to be the fifth foul on that, uh, that offensive player. Like I said, I, it, it's, it's a tough situation to get in, but I understand the question. But if, it, like I said, if they would have made eye contact, the league could have just dropped his arm, went and put the ball in play. But those are things that you have to do when you referee in the game it's about the game, what, what was best for the game. But the, the, I, I, the key here is we're understanding that referee your primary, pick up your primary defender, and if you have the whistles, definitely make eye contact with the partner. I, I think at this point, you kind of we're kind of differentiating the, the levels of experience here. And um, when you start getting into time and score and what's been going on, that's a higher level officiating, if everybody understands that. Like Rodney said, if this is early on, if it's block charge, blah, blah, blah you know what, and you haven't signaled yet, like, like Rodney said, you may just let the center take the incorrect call as a grade and we move forward. But if this is a one-point ball game with a minute to go or less than a minute to go, and like Rodney said, this may be her fifth foul or whatever, and you haven't signaled yet, I mean, I would be of the point of running over to the center and say, look, man, it's a blocking foul. I'm going to take this call. Or, you know what, or have her signal a blocking call or talk her into it somehow. But you got to do what's best for the game at that point. You know, that's what I would do. Does that make sense, Mark? I mean, but, but now you're getting into very integral things about the game that it just depends on the level that you've been officiating. And, and a lot of people just don't understand that at this point. Yeah, the, the, the thing is to try to to avoid these situations because mm -hmm. Martin just said just that is at a higher level, and I understand that, and that's why I put a little 
uh, some brakes on it. But because even if you walk over, Mark, even if you walk over and you you're gonna take that play, you you better expect some heat mm -hmm. from the opponent. Yep. yep. Better expect that. Because just because your partner says, okay, you can take it, that doesn't mean that play is over. Mm -hmm. So like I said, the, the the key here is to avoid these situations. If you if you referee your primary then we will not be in these situations. If you make eye contact on double whistles, you will not be in this situation. And that's so the we, whole thing about, about this breaking down of the video stuff is that is not we're the, trying to put you into a situation where you do, are not in the situation. If you, if you can understand your primaries and stay out of them, I mean, stay in them and not go out of into your secondaries and so on, you're going to, reduce the chances of this happening but we feel from the DDR staff point is that this happens a lot doesn't it mark yep absolutely yeah so we're trying to avoid this from happening yep okay it's good stuff you want to get into uh, let's get into clip two here we go And I'll run this all the way through because you're going to get three angles on it. So I'll just let run it one time. I was at this game. <laughs> Were you really? Yes. The, the, the thing I want everybody to understand about this game, too, that is a factor in Division One and NBA and WNBA you got the crowds involved, you got media involved. I mean, this is very high intensity. I mean, there's no excuse for missing a call, but th because that's what we get paid for. But there's just so many other factors that are involved. The last angle right here. Hmm. Who's primary on this play? <laughs> that's a trail player, so I would say that's coming from the sea. C so should have the uh, stay with the uh, engaged all the way at the end of the play. Stop right there. Who else? Stop. Who else? Who else is? Uh, who else is primary on this play? I think lead can help. I, yeah, I agree. I, I think agree. Lead can help too. I would say lead. Very good. I now, think Trell could help big time on that one if they step down between the twenty-eight foot line. Because it's a, it's basically that two ref, uh, two referee defense. Because it's a jump shot right at the free throw line. So C and trail. Okay, um, we're gonna run it. There, but first of all, notice the score and the time. Notice score and time, right? Las Vegas is down by two, with six seconds left. Right now, let's watch. Let's watch the. We're talking about gamers here this is a gamer you're talking six seconds left in a game let me get back uh, to me get that. by two let's watch the slot go back go back to where we see the slot the center run it run it keep yeah, going so watch the clock. no keep going keep going i tell you when to stop Stop, right here. Right, one, one more click, one more click.
Stop. Right there. What is the slot doing? Talking to the coach. Getting yelled at by the coach. Turns <laughs> and addressing the coach in a two-point ball game with 3.8 seconds to go on a fast break. Run the play. Stop. I'll go back. Go back, back to the point of contact. Sure. Stop. Where's my slot? Where's my center? It's still getting yelled at by the coach. La La Land. Behind the play. Not in the screen. Not in the play. <laughs> because of the breakdown, the breakdown from one referee in a critical part of the game causes us to miss this play. Because if the center would have been running with the ball, with the pack, the center would have been in perfect position to see that play. Now I asked who was the primary on this play at the beginning, because we're talking about two, three seconds left, two point ball game, which is now an obvious foul. Who's Anyone the primary? Everybody on, everybody on the crew is primary because that right there is the only play that we are refereeing. That is the only play that we are refereeing. The lead is not refereeing any other play. The trail is not refereeing any other play. And if the center would have been in position, that would have been the only play with 1.2 seconds left that everybody's refereeing. Correct? Mm -hmm. Agreed. Here, Rodney, here's the other thing. We got a lot of comments on this play. This was early on in the season this year, is that people thought that the offensive player created the contact. Now, what we told them was that the offensive player beat the defender to that spot. And she stopped yeah. short of the con – tried to stop short of the contact. When there's a backside defender, the backside defender making contact is always illegal. It's always illegal because the backside defender runs up the back of that, of that shooter. So now if we're, if we're running in the, the – if the defender is in a different path and now the offensive player steps into her path, not giving her time to stop and or change direction, then it either going to be a no call or offensive foul. But this is not the case. This shooter and dribbler is going to the basket and the defender is in a legal, an illegal guarding position and failed to stop. So it doesn't here, matter if, she step, so, if the shooter steps to one side or the other, that is the backside defender's illegal contact. That is her foul. Now, here's the other thing. Here's the other point is that we talk about this is the last play, so everybody should have an opinion. So if you notice on this snapshot, how many engage – oops, sorry. Hold on a second. How many engaged players do we have? None, one, except one for this right here. Yeah. So this is the last play, the last engagement that everybody should have an opinion on. And you can kind of has, has look. I think the trail's closed. If you go to that last angle, uh, Mark, he's closed. I don't think he can see. Um, yeah, this is the trail's angle kind of right here. Which one? Where is it? Right there. Well, I said that's everybody's primary. That's everybody's primary. This is this is uh, game one of the playoffs. This 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 didn't happen in the early part. Of, this is game one, first round of the WNBA playoffs. And this was the breakdown that we did about that she got there first. 
she got to her position prior to that defender, so she's entitled to that position. And like Roddy said, a, a, a defender from behind is responsible for the contact, kind of like a car accident. You know, if you rear end somebody, you're responsible for that contact. If you notice on her shot, like I said, not to be, not trying to be, on this, on this play, you're not trying to be pure. So my point is she does not, she's a left-handed shooter. She does not jump to one side. She jumps, she takes a step and jumps forward. She takes a step and jumps forward. So that backside defender is responsible for that contact. And see where my trail is? It would have been great if either one of the trail or the lead would have just came up with a whistle on that play. We're talking a two-point ball game. Rodney, one thing that uh, when you were talking about scoring situation as well, they're down two. If you're in doubt, if it's a 50-50 on this play, would you say you'd be better off? Let her have the free throw. The worst that's going to happen is we're going to go, go to overtime. But – they don't even get a chance now because we went ahead and passed on this, on this foul. That's, well, that that too. But like I said, every, every everybody should be refereeing this play. Everybody should be refereeing this play. Even like I said, even if I come up with a late whistle because I know there had to be contact because my shooter goes to the floor and now my my defender comes up with her arms up. Like even the trail here probably didn't have a, a great open look. Sometimes your experience have to take over. Like Roy Gouvan is in the trail. I mean, he's been refereeing the WBA for 20 years. So by my experience have to take over and say, that is too big. I mean, shot. He I mean, is we're dead. Talking about an airborne shooter. We're talking about an airborne shooter. Uh, Rodney, I have, a, I have a question. So let's say, because um, some people have put it in the comments too, that they have a whistle and they put on the free throw line. Are we going to the monitor? We're putting 0. 0.6 on the clock and um, that's how we resume play? That is correct. That, because that, this The this point of the, the contact? The clocks, the clocks run to zero. It's at the point when you, when you have the foul, not when you have the whistle. So a replay, replay center would ask, let us know when you have the foul. And they would show all the angles that we just had, and they would say, right there, that's the foul. Right? So we would put 0.6 on the clock, shoot the two free throws, and I'm pretty sure Washington would probably call the time out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But here, well, you know, when we get back to it, you know, level of experience, you know, like I said, I, I, we can talk time and score. I know we, we, we shouldn't. But like I said, right here, that is the only play that we are refereeing. Because I know what the score is. There's no coach that can, <laughs> can say anything to me at this time about any play to where I'm going to respond. They're not going to break my concentration. At this point of the game, we are on high alert. So that's why I said, who, when I asked who was the primary on this play, we're all primary. We are all primary, but it is a breakdown of the system when the when the slot never gets down to position because they turn and talk to the coach. So it hurts our it hurts the entire crew. It put the entire crew because I know Roy, I know Roy Gouvet. If he would have had an, any kind of inkling that he could see the, the contact, he would have called it. Now, like I said, I would have loved to have seen the, the lead come up with a whistle, late whistle, whatever, but just come up with a whistle. I have a question. Sure. Jason Hayes here. Could this be a situation where officials are more afraid of putting air in a whistle with this kind of time and score versus them actually missing the call? Well, you know, that's what you get paid for. The bottom line is, uh, you know, it, it takes – it takes it takes courage to make certain calls. This is not this this gonna take courage. Like I said, this is like I would like Roy, he has the experience to say, I'm gonna take a shot, even though I can't see the point of 
just based upon, like I said, time and score, the way the defender raises her arm afterwards, the contact that makes you know the, the defender, uh, the shooter goes to the floor. I could have, if, if you want to say, take an educated guess. But like I said, it's a breakdown in the system because if the center was there, easy play. The center would have had that play. To, to answer, to, you know, kind of expand on that question, once you get to this level, the NBA level, Division One level, you're getting paid a lot of money. And when you're getting paid this type of money, these types of plays, even though they do happen, okay, they should be very limited. You get paid for your eyes. But we all been there where we've been out of position. You know, we, we, we've all been there. It only takes one time. You say, never going to happen again. Never going to happen again. Hey, Roddy, can I add something to that? Um, one thing I've learned is that we could do good for the first 38 minutes of the game, but then that last two minutes, we could have had a really great game, and that one right there could have just turned everything upside down. That's because that's the only play they're going to remember. Mm -hmm. That's the only play they're gonna remember. That could have been the only play that you missed all night. And that's that, you know what, Scott. That's a very good point. It you can have a like like Rodney said, you can have a perfect game. I mean, just absolutely one hundred percent. But when you get down to that last minute or so, and you miss a call like this, that's the only thing anybody's gonna remember, and the media as well. That's what they're gonna they're gonna blast that. They're not going to talk about your first 38 or 39 minutes when you were perfect. They're just going to blast the negative. And that, you know, and we, you know, this, let me just touch on this too. But this, this is where it comes into partnering as well. Like I, like I said, that's why I asked who was primary in this position, at this point of the game. Everybody's primary. Would I like to see in the slot? In position and not talking to the coach, absolutely. But everybody is primary. So, like I said, if the lead or the trail would have came up with a whistle, if I'm the slot, I'm say, "Hey, man, thank you, because now you just saved the crew. You saved the entire crew by coming up with that play. Because this, like I said, that is a play that everybody is refereeing at that point." That is the only play of the game. And so I talk about partnering. Referee where your partner cannot. I know my, if I'm the lead and I don't, I, I see that play happen and I don't see, I don't hear a whistle from my slot. Even if I do hear a whistle by my slot. See, we get on that play right there, we can have three whistles. We can have three whistles because that's the only play that we're refereeing. And the biggest takeaway from this play is that do not, do not get distracted by anything at this point in the game. The coach can wait. Anything else can wait but this play. And, and that little one second, one, you know, 1 1.5 seconds that happened there, that probably cost this crew the, uh, that play. Any other questions on this? Okay, let's get into clip three. Stop, go back. Get to it. What do you want to run? That's the beginning. Right there, freeze, right there. Okay. Right? Is my trail in, in a dependable position? No, sir. No. Nope. My trail should be either even with that defender or at least one or two steps towards midcourt, correct? Correct. Correct. Agree. 
Okay, now if we put if we put our trail in a dependable position right there, now run it. Stop. If my trail would have been dependable position, he could have got to the to the baseline and beat the play to the baseline and picked up the defender. Now my trail, my trail, the lead does not even have a whistle on this play, correct? Okay, let's go back to point of contact. Stop right here. Now how could, how could my center or lead see what the defender did? I think they're both guessing at this point. So when we talk about positioning, we talk, you know, we, we talk about basic mechanics, being in the right position, working the system, working the mechanics, referee in your primary. This, this is a prime example as well. If you in the right position, if you work in the, the mechanics, if you work in the system, my trail would have been even with the defender or back behind the defender and would not have gotten beat. Would not have gotten beat to the baseline. If it, Even if the, the lead would have gotten beat to the baseline, he still would have been in a better position to referee that defender. Like I said, when I'm coming down in transition, I am saying white has the ball. I'm watching red. I'm watching red. I'm watching red because I am picking up the defender that can hurt me. But here we have the, the whistle actually comes from the center who is further away from the play than the lead. Run it. Now, Rodney, let me ask you a question. I mean, the center blew the whistle because the defender uh, appeared to be knocked down. But what's the philosophy that you would use on – look at the offensive player. I mean, landed on two feet and walked away from the play. Now, there's two different schools of thought here. If the offensive player goes down as well, correct, and then you got this situation – do you think the center official reacted to this contact? Uh, the, yeah, the, the center official act reacted to the defender going to the floor, period. Yes. The, the center did not have a clue on if the defender was legal or illegal. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if we work in the system, if we work in the system, I would not even have had a whistle from the center. And if the lead would have been in position, the lead would have had a whistle on this play. Or possibly a no call, you know, you know, based upon whatever angle you want to look at. But like I said, if you work in the system, there is no way the center should have a whistle on this play. That is different from a two players on the floor, hard foul, two players on the floor. But right here, this play starts off wrong because the lead, I mean, excuse me, the trail is not in a, in the proper position. Ronnie, I got he, two. Did he always oh, start ahead. off as a trail or did the lead come over? I didn't see that. Well, let's put it, let's, let's say, let's say, let's say the, the lead had not rotated. Let's say the lead is all the way over, and right. and this this ref the referee that's now in the trail was actually in the center. Still, if I, if you're in the center, and that ball to the sideline, why are you standing at the free throw line extended? Would you not come up and referee that play? Because the trail on the other side of the floor can't referee that play. So even if the even if the lead was just not rotating or had not rotated yet, 
that center or trail should be at least even with that defender, at least even with that defender. Then if it swung back around, if he was the center, he would step back down. But we cannot expect our trail, who is on the other side of the floor, to see a reach in, a hit in the face, or foul from where they are. So that's why the position on the floor, trail, lead, and slot, it's just, it's just an area. That doesn't mean you're concreted to the floor. You go to where you need the referee to play. Uh, Ronnie, I have a question. So, because it, it, this happens quite a bit, um, and I don't mean to be disrespectful in a way, but we do have a, a lot of high school referees in our chapter that just are not as fast as they used to be, and they just can't get to the baseline. So my question to you is, say this situation happens, what are, you, what are we telling this referee to stop? When's a good point when you know that you're beaten to stop and then move to find an angle to find the defender? That's piece number one. And then number two is what it, at center, what are you telling yourself? Because I think the center, like we said, reacted to just the defender falling down. Obviously doesn't have all the information is it best just to totally stay off it, even though it's a lot of contact or deems to be a lot of contact? So those are just my two questions, one for this referee and then one for the, on the other side. Well, you see, you, you guys are a little different than us because you, you guys stay off the floor because we are never off the floor because we're part of the game. So the, 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 the trail going to lead was all the way off the floor when this play started and ran up the sideline off the floor and transitioned. So, I, uh, even if I get, even if he gets beat, you go onto the floor to a spot, stop, or at least slow down if, where you need to go to see that defender, wherever you need to go, whether it's, it's right next to the other defender, there at the top of the key, extend it. You go where you need to go to referee to play. So there's no magic spot spot on the floor, but you just need to go wherever you need to go, the referee that, that player. So I'm going a, I'm to a go onto the floor and basically stop the referee that play. I'm going to pull up this referee that play. Like I said, the center should not even have a whistle on this play. Okay. Now, like I said, if it's two bodies on the floor and there's no whistle, Maybe I would come up with a whistle, but like I said, this comes to trusting your partner, referee in, your, referee in the defense, referee in your primary, because I got to trust my partner to, like, to get this play. Now, I know some guys are not fast as they used to be, so that's what I'm saying. I, I hope when you're not as fast as you used to be, you have experience and had enough games and seen enough plays and have enough experience to come, you know, know where to go to referee this play. But if you don't know how to referee the defender, which I'm assuming this person does not. That's why this person stays right there on the sideline and did not have a whistle. But if you were in the habit of refereeing the defender, you're going to go wherever you need to go to pick up that defender. Yeah, that, that helps, Rodney, because I think that what we'll teach is stop instead of keep floating down and get onto the floor, which I think is, is a good piece for us to, Mark, to help. Mark, can, can, can we run that play? It, it, all the way through so we can see the foul again. Sure. Was was that was that defender established? I I mean did we got did we get the right call there with the charge? Well, I think at least the hustle of that C, I mean, he did as best as he could in that situation. He hustled to a spot and put a whistle on the play. It doesn't look like the play, the offensive player is going to and through the defender, though. Uh -huh. Agreed. And so. it's just going straight up, comes down. So I think it is a reaction to the player going down. I think a no call. 
Yeah, I, I, I would kind of, um, I mean, I guess Rodney can kind of comment on it. I kind of feel like it that there doesn't need to be a whistle on the play. There aren't two bodies on the ground. The offensive player seems to take most of the contact. And if you did have a whistle on the play, the lead would have to get to the end line and it would be a blocking foul. But when there's no whistle, I kind of feel like a no call is a better situation and just let the the uh, transition of the trail to new lead live and die with that call. Okay, let's get into uh, let's get into the next clip. Oh, grainy, this one. Remember this on Sports Center. <laughs> Who's primary on this play? Everyone's. This is a game ending play. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody think this play is easy? No, no. No. no this is a tough play, I think. Okay, can you back it up? Sure. The original, to the play by play. Stop. I can't see, I can't see the position of my referee. I remember the play though. Yeah, I don't think any of them have the referees on this. I think they're all zoom ins. I mean, he's not vertical. He definitely goes A to B, but it's a tough call. <laughs> hey, Mark, the first play you showed was a, was a wide angle. Uh, could you go back to that one? Okay, he's going forward. Is that good right there, Rodney? Good, that's good. So, 1.1, 1 .1, right? Two point ball game. The lead is in a dependable position. He gets there. He gets there to pick up the defender. I don't have a trail and I don't have a slot on this play, correct? He's right there. He's right there, yeah. Let me go I back a little bit. Yeah. But he only can see the offense. He needs to take a step up. Oh, he's good. He's in transition. He got to go where he can see the defender. He has to go. He, he is going full speed to get there. Yeah. Why, why is this a difficult play to call a foul? Does he not, this looks like he's fading away. I, I personally don't think it's a difficult play way to call a foul. It's an A to B foul where the defensive player goes into the offensive player. Same as kind of like a walk under foul where a player goes up. Just because a player is going away from the basket, the defense, if they continue to go into them, is still responsible for the contact. It's still an A to B. You are absolutely 100% correct. It's A to B, even though he is fading away. Like I said, you're refereeing the game. You're refereeing the game. That contact right there, go back, right, 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 freeze. That contact right there takes that shooter off his normal layup uh, to the basket. That contact right there. Because if one person, they both going towards the basket, 
but the shooter is going slower than the defender, so the defender is responsible for that contact. So since since this is in transition and the player is from behind, C would probably have the should come up with the call, even though it's everybody's call, correct? Because it looks like lead is watching high. The lead, you know, the lead ain't watching high. The lead looking is, is, has an open look at the defender body contact. So does the center. So does the slot. But I'm gonna tell you why they probably like the center or the slot did not put air in the whistle. If you go to the other angle. What happened? Uh, the other thing too, that the slot did an excellent job to get underneath the under players to maintain his angle. So for those of you that thought that he should have stopped and done something else, that's incorrect. Yeah, he did a good job of getting underneath those players. He's going to wherever he can to referee this play. You're on this angle? Okay. Yeah, right here. Because right here, the slot has a, a closed look. But like I said, everybody's refereeing this play. Keep going, keep going. Another click, another click, another click. Another click. Right there. Right, th right here, right here. Now, freeze it, freeze it. I'm going to tell you what the, the slot is. The slot sees the hand of the shooter wrapped around the waist of the defender. Mm -hmm. Now keep keep going. You you will end up seeing it. Keep going. Yeah, right down. That's what pulled him down. See, because our players are really tricky, I'm pretty sure Ingram has worked on this play. So now he pulls he pulls the defender into him more. This is after the illegal contact, but I'm just telling you what the center has, has saw. But this is way too much contact not to have a foul on the play. And like I said, we're talking about a two-point ball game. Ingram is not shooting the ball from behind the basket. That contact takes them behind the basket. But like I said, everybody is refereeing this play. Lee, slot. And if Trail would have got down, would have been refereeing it as well. Two point ball game. One second left on the clock. <laughs> Anything else? No, those are all good points. See, we have a little bit of advantage in our game because we, like I said, we are talking to these things, um, we are talking through this at the timeout previous to this play. So we are saying Rudy Gobert is a shot blocker. Ingram is not a flopper, but he's light. So we're, we're talking through all these things. So it's difficult to call a foul on Rudy Gobert in this case, because we're like, he's a shot blocker. So I'm just telling you, we're talking about time and score, game situation, getting into a position, because I have my slot and my lead in a perfect position to call a play, call this play. Hey, Mark. Hey, hey Rodney. Can I mention another advantage that you guys have as well? Uh, when Mark showed the first clip, uh, the camera angle was so far away, similar to the, the films that we get for high school and for small college. And you don't really have a good angle when you're reviewing film here. This is the angle that we normally have, right? However, when he went down and showed the other uh, angle on the floor where the lead will be standing, then he had another angle on top of the backboard. You guys have a huge advantage when it comes to that too, and you have different camera angles uh, throughout the game. Correct. And you know, it, you know, bringing up the camera angle is a good point. Remember, the three referees on the floor, they only have, each of them have one angle. That's it. We don't have multiple angles. We don't have the 10 angles in the overhead. We don't have those views. We have, it's, there's, each referee has one angle at the play. That's it. And sometimes you're just not going to see what you need to see until you see the replay with the overhead and the slash, you know, and the, you know, the, bas the camera over the basket. 
you just don't have those angles. So you only can referee the play based upon the one angle that you have. And like I said, you know, just like I said with Roy Rubin, sometimes your experience have to kick in and say, I'm going to call this play because my experience tells me that that is way too much contact. Even though I didn't see all the contact, but it tells me that it's too much contact. Ron, I have a question. Um, it's similar to the one that we showed for the WNBA two-point game. You know, we talked about it wouldn't hurt putting that referee on the, on the line for two shots. They make both go overtime. Just a question for you, or if the game's tied, does that make any difference? Oh, that makes a big difference. Okay. That makes a big difference. That makes a big difference. Because I think if, if it was tied and we have a no call, we go to overtime, maybe not a huge play. Nobody's going to be that pissed. Right. pissed. Mm -hmm. So to, to add to that, you know, we have, if we have, we're coming down the stretch with situations like this and we have a conference during a timeout or any opportunities to talk when it comes to a last second shot, are we talking about situations like this? If it's they're down two, down three, up one, tie ball game. Absolutely. Well, at, at the timeout, I'm like, a two point ball game. Both teams are in the penalty. I'm I'm going to suspect Ingram is going to get the ball. We're talking about different scenarios. Who's going to get the ball? And I'm I'm saying, well, they're they're on the road, so are they going to try to win the game with a three or go to the basket and go win in overtime? So I'm talking, we're talking all these things. Who's going to have the ball? So who's going to take the last shot? Rebounding coverage. Let's not be too pure. New Orleans is down by two. We do not have to be too pure on this play. Do not have to be pure. That's all I'm saying. If it's a contact and we can justify the contact, it's a, it's a foul. Like right there, it's easy to say that's a foul. So you don't you don't have to be pure on this play. So I'm saying everybody get in the position. Everybody's in position to referee this play. Every all eyes on the shooter. All eyes Just, on the, I'm not calling a hand check. I'm not calling a D3. Uh, none of that. It's like we are refereeing the play. And just going back to Rodney's point, you get into a higher level of officiating once you know and start to realize who the impact players are. And you can talk about the obvious ones when you're in a game. Who's going to get the game when Kobe used to be in the game? Kobe was probably going to get the ball. You know, Jordan was going to get the ball. You know, LeBron's going to get the ball. That's the type of mentality that you have to get into as a high school official, small college official, not only impact players because there are not too many of them, but who was hot in the last two or three minutes? that has been getting the ball. That's the person who's probably going to get the ball in the last second shot. And that's who you have to focus on. And most likely, someone is going to call a timeout, and you're going to be able to talk about it. You know, and that, that, that's a good point. Like I said, we have impact players. We know who our players are. We know who our shooters are. In your high school game or in your college games, you should know who your shooters are, is, are, are, are as, as well. Like when I'm when I was doing high school, I used to stand there at halftime, excuse me, at warm-ups, and, and I'm looking at the big guys. I'm looking at the dribblers. I'm looking at the shooters, like, oh, this guy can handle. Oh, this guy can shoot. Oh, the, the footwork of the big guy when he's warming up is not that good. So I know we might have some travels in the post. So I'm going through these scenarios prior to the game starting. And then I don't have to look at the stats. I, it, you know, number 21 is lighting it up. And now we come down to the end of the game. I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure it's number 21 is going to make the shot. So let's everybody make sure nobody, the defender doesn't hold them. Let's make sure the defender is legal. Let's make sure the screens are legal because they're probably going to set the screen. They've been setting screens for the guy all, all night. So these are the things that I'm talking about, even if I don't know the player. He, that may have been his only 21-point ball game. I don't know, but I'm still talking about that scenario at that time out because I want to be prepared to get the play correct. I want to give my crew the best advantage we can to get the play correct.
All right, good stuff. Let's get into uh, next clip. This is a very interesting play, as we will see. I'll tell you what a free quick go flow free right there freeze did that defender legal no I would no they no. gotta get in the pen no Go to your definition. Go to your definitions, guys. You know, is she, uh, Mark, help me out here, two feet on the floor or whatever it's called, facing the opponent's torso? Right now, I'm going from trail to lead. I got white. I got white. I'm refereeing white. Red has the ball. I'm watching white. I'm watching white. I'm watching white. He gets the perfect position. I can't talk watching the dribbler or if he's watching the defender. But I, if I'm refereeing the defender, I know my defender is not legal. So I can tell you right here that he is not refereeing the defender. He's refereeing, he's looking at the ball handler. The defender goes down. Are you on mute for a sec? I got a replay angle too. You want to see that one, Rodney? Yeah, let's see it. I don't know. For that. I, I'm assuming he called a push off. I, yeah. Gonna... Um, I'll go slow more on it. Yeah. Illegal. Right there. Did we? I don't see a push off, but. Yeah, that's what everybody's banking on. Everybody's banking on that uh, uh, red 24 pushed off. But if you look at the feet also, there was a tangle. I'm almost positive there was a tangle right there. That right? Okay, maybe not. But she does not push off. I don't think she goes elbow to wrist. And, and, uh, this is another good point because this happens in our league quite a bit because our guys have gotten so good when they feel the offensive player's forearm come touch them, they catapult themselves away from the defender in the hope to draw the offensive foul, as in similar to this play. Because that's how good our guys have gotten when they feel that contact. But here, the defender is illegal at that contact right there. That the right knee, right? Right there. The leg, right leg. Yeah. With the with the forearm and the knee. That is illegal. So what what again, if I get to the point where if I get to the spot on the floor to where I can referee the defender, the dribbler, because it's, it, it's obvious here that the, the lead now is refereeing or looking at the dribbler. I don't know why we do that because of <laughs> the dribbler can't hurt me. When I'm in transition, like I said, I'm saying red has the ball. I am watching white. I am watching white. White is the person that can hurt me. That is the person that can hurt me. So I am now saying I'm white. I don't care what the dribbler is doing. So if I get to the point, like if I get into position where I can referee that defender, I will get this play right 10 out of 10 times. Now, now here's, a, here's a little nugget. We have a foul there, and let's say there is a little bit of a push off. Let's just say there's a, there's, there's a little bit of a push off. Because first we have the illegal contact, and now we have a little bit of a push off. 
you're going to take some heat from a coach, maybe, who knows. But you can come out, you can come out after your whistle and say, first foul. Because that was the first foul committed right there by the defender. Because somebody may see the little chicken wing come out. I don't know. But I, like I said, this is not the situation. But I would say first foul and report number, I think that's 24. That's yeah, 24. 24. Here is to get into position and referee the defender. Get into the and, that, and that all and that all goes back to Rodney experience that you're trying to communicate to everybody that the first foul is on 24 because she's illegal. You know, don't don't you know because the coach here does not cannot see uh, what happened here. Sorry, I'm going back. I went to the wrong one. I'll get there. You know, the coach here cannot see what's going on. So that's who you have to communicate with as you're coming out as the, the new lead. But if you use your voice and use your words and mechanics, hey, first foul, 24, block, boom, she was illegal, and you go to the table, there's nothing more she can say. And I'm glad that the trail did not have a whistle on this play. <laughs> okay, could we run it all the way through? Because I want to see, I want to see the lead. Just run it all the way through. You want this replay angle or the other one that we had? Wide angle. The wide angle. Okay, let me get this. Rodney, can you repeat that last comment you just did? You made about the T. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that last comment about the T that uh, that you just made? Oh, I just okay. said I didn't. It's glad that the trail did not have a whistle on this play. But the, the, remember that the, the trail had this play coming up the floor, and now it goes into the primary of the lead. But he did not. That he did not have a whistle on the play. Thank you. Okay, I got it. Go. Now stop, freeze. Right, because sec no secondary defenders coming over, right? We still got the primary defender that came over and picked up the ball. Right, but, so let it run all the way through. I'll tell you when to stop. Are you want me to stop it up? Yeah, go, go back. Okay, let's watch, watch my trail. I tell you when to stop. The trail did not have a whistle, but the trail, right? The, the, watch, watch the trail. The trail automatically says offensive foul. Watch. Yeah, she's gone. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> right? She's out of there. Let it, let it play. I want to see the, the, the signals. Oh, they, they don't show it. Sorry. Okay. But that's how important it is to get to the spot and referee the defender so you can see the legality of the defender instead of guessing on the play. Any any questions on this? I mean, this looks more to me like a flop than an offensive foul, but could you potentially go with a no call here, Rodney? No, I think it's too much contact on the initial part for the driver because that driver was going to the basket, and now that, that knee and forearm and somewhat body checks uh, dislodges or reroutes that, that dribbler. So it would have been easy to just say foul. Now, you know, I mean, if, if you're going to say no call, fine. I'm okay with a no call. I'm okay with a no call just because the, the shooter, the offensive player now has a wide open shot because, in my opinion, the defender flops as well. So, I mean, it would have been okay to have a no call. I just wouldn't have liked it. 
But if, if you would have called a foul prior to that, it would have been prior to the shooting motion, correct? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Hey, Mark, yes. Hey, Mark, one last question. Hey, Martin, you mentioned about the offensive player not going from elbow to wrist. Can you elaborate on that, please? When, when an offensive player, uh, you know, we talk about a dislodge, about a push off, the elbow is usually connected all the way to the wrist. So once it is in line, if you can imagine that, then that is a push off. A lot of times they stop short or, you know, and they're not in line elbow to wrist. And Ronnie can elaborate on that as well, but it's not an offensive foul. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Ronnie, okay. you got anything on that? No, I'm good. You're right. You're right on that. Okay. Okay. Let's go clip six. And again, Mark, you know, these types of plays happen a lot in high school basketball, don't they? Sure do. Absolutely. And again, we're, we're, you know, Rodney and his staff, I mean, we're just trying to get you to, you know, trust a certain system where we're not getting into these types of situations. Who's primary? Lead. <laughs> You notice the question is always, whose primary coverage area is this? Because we're trying to get to a point. I, I have lead if they get to the baseline and accept it. Yeah, sometimes you just understand you're not as fast as you used to be, and the whole, you know, the whole scenario behind that. But when the look at where the where the center is when the whistle occurred, do you think the center was able to pick up that defender right there from where that center is? Do you think that the, do you think the center was able to see the legality of that defender? No, not, not from that angle. Absolutely not. So I'm just saying, if you if we get into the correct position, work the system. Like I said, even if the lead would have pulled, uh, excuse me, the trail, the lead would have pulled up, the referee, the defender, still would have been in a better position than the the center. The center referees the crash. He sees the crash and goes off in some foul. I mean, how many players did the center have to go through to get to the defender, right? We just outlined it. I mean, at least three, right? Go forward, Mark. Okay, stop. Here he is. He's in his way. The shooter's in the way. He never and had the actual defender's in the way. So how can you officiate that play? Never have an open look at the defender. Like I said, we, we, when we're not in position and we don't referee the defender, we referee the last two tenths of the play. Crash itself, players going to the floor. And that is a total guess. That is a total guess. But we all have to agree, we, we, we do have to have a whistle on the play, correct? Yeah, correct. Yes, yes. Rodney, I got a question for you on this play. Sure, go ahead. Would, would it be better if the, if the lead, uh, of course it's the lead's primary seed, shouldn't, shouldn't have had a whistle, but would it be better if the lead had just stopped 
and maybe button hooked or just stopped right there short of the free throw line and seen through? He knows he wasn't going to get to the baseline. So, yeah, whenever you know you're beat and you can't get the baseline, you get to a position and stop the referee, the defender. Like if he had just pulled up, like, like I said, even come onto the floor and be right behind whatever defender that is or that, that offensive player. Yes. Referee, the defender. Like I said, when I'm coming down in transition, I'm saying black has the ball. I'm watching white. I'm watching white. Who can hurt me? So I'm going right to the defender that can hurt me. So I'm going a, I'm to a go onto the court. I don't care if I'm at the free throw line. I'm going to where I need to see the play, where I need to see that defender. Okay. But once again, here, we have, we have double whistles here. We have double whistles. So the lead actually has a whistle on the play. So if I'm the center and if I, if I do have a whistle on the play, I'm still giving it up to the lead. We have to make eye contact. We have to make eye contact. We can't be in a hurry or we can't be trying to say, oh, I got this play right or competing with your partner to where you want to be the one to turn and signal the play. Because I got double whistles because it's going to make the crew look bad if we come up and we got a blarge. So we make an eye contact. I don't really care who has the play. I don't really care who takes it to the table. My point being is, if you make eye contact, I'm not trying to sell the play. My lead, that is my lead's primary. If I got a whistle in the center, I'm letting the lead take the play. And if the lead wants to give it up to me, even though I know I shouldn't have a whistle, the lead would let me take it. But I'm making eye contact with my partner. I am not competing with my partner. Thanks. Any other, any other questions on this? I think I think looks like Lee's gonna gonna punch it as well. Um, right there. Um, any questions on this one? We got one more after this, and we're we're, we're done. Let this play out a little bit. Just let sure. it. Yep. Yes. Just okay. I was just I was just looking to make sure whenever you got players go to the floor, you never want to leave players on the floor because you don't know what their reaction is going to be. Get up, throw a punch. So I, I, I was just trying to see what happened on the play after they after we have players to the floor. Okay. All right, last clip. Freeze. You know, on, on, what do you want of that running? Anyway, keep going forward, forward, forward. Freeze. Who, who, who's primary? What? Freeze right there. Hold it right there. Right there. Go back a couple clicks. Freeze right there. Right there. One more click forward. Right there. Freeze. Who is our lead watching on this play? Looks like the basketball. The ball. The ball. Exactly. Why are we refereeing the dribbler? Once again, when I'm when you're in transition, I immediately go, well, I immediately go to the clock and then but here I'm, I immediately say, watch the ball, I'm watching black, I'm watching black, I'm watching black. I am saying that all the way down the court to make sure that I am not looking at the dribbler. Because this is discipline. This is the discipline that you need to have in order to become a good referee. Because I get to my spot, I am refereeing the thing. The only thing I'm like, who can hurt me? Who can hurt me? Who can hurt me? So now my lead right now is still looking at the dribbler. 
still looking back at the offensive player. Still looking at the offensive player. Keep going, keep going. You'll see the, the lead come up with a, uh, a fist. The lead, the lead doesn't even know what he has. All he knows is he's calling the foul because the player's on the floor. Once again, if we work the system, you get to a, a position on the floor, a spot on the floor where you can referee that defender. I mean, I, you, you can't tell me that this person can't be fast enough to get into a position to referee that defender. The key is get to a point where you, a spot where you can referee that defender. I need to get to a spot where I can referee that defender. I need to see that defender. Rodney, question. Just say in this situation, lead is B, and that's the look they have. Uh, I'm guessing you're saying they need to be more disciplined and stay off this play and let, let center have it? Yeah, well, it, I, I don't want to say you, you need to get there to see it. This, this is a play where if I'm the lead and I, I technically got beat or somebody stepped in front of me right at that point of contact or and I could not pick up that defender, and me in the slot, I'm saying, oh, no whistle, boom, I got a whistle on the play. Okay. Now it, I come up and tell my, my center, hey, thanks. Because I, I couldn't see. I could because I, you know, I couldn't see the play. So I would tell them thanks. But the bottom line is there's no way my center should have a, a whistle at the same time. Even though this is a it's still in the paint and it's not a weak side drive, my center should not have a whistle at the same time as my lead. Because once again, when we talk about primary, we're talking about primary. But if I know, like I said, if I don't hear a whistle and I have this kind of contact, yeah, I can come up with a whistle. I can have a cadence whistle. Any, any questions on this? I think the theme tonight is getting one, trying to get to the baseline when you can, right, Rodney? And if you can, then you've got to stop and find the best look possible to find the legality of a defender. That's what I see on most of these clips. If you work the mechanics, the mechanics are what they are. And like I said, the slot, lead, and trail, those are just areas on the floor. That doesn't mean you have to stay there. You go where you need to go to see the play. In transition plays, you immediately pick up the defender that can hurt you. So like I said, in, in transition, I am going where I need to go to referee that defender. So I'm coming down. I'm always talking to myself. White has the ball. I'm watching black. Watching black. I'm watching black. And I'm getting to a spot where I can referee that defender. And like I said, I st even in transition, I have a primary. In transition, I have a secondary. So I am going to where I need to go to see the play. So if you have to pull up and stop, because I, like I said, I understand you, you, you know, as you go, as you get older, you, you slow down. So you go to where you need to go to, the referee to play. Um, Ronnie, question for you. Do, do y'all in, uh, in your pregames, do you guys talk about transition plays? Because I think the crew is a little more vulnerable in that type of situation. Well, the kids are getting more athletic and faster and bigger and stronger these days at all levels, high school, college, and obviously the pros. Do you guys discuss coverages in these situations in, uh, in transition? Well, yeah, well, maybe not so much in all our pregames. It all depends on the, on the team. Like we, we have teams that push the ball, fast mm -hmm. guard. So yeah, we, we will talk about, uh, you know, cause we know stats. So I, I would say, you know, Atlanta gets, you know, 38 points a game off of fast breaks. So Utah gets, you know, 40 points in the paint. So we know we're going to have post play with Utah. We know we're going to have block shots. You know, Goubert averages 4.5 blocks a game. So we, we know these stats. So in, on fast, the teams that fast break, we know that in transition, we, I, would, I tell my crew, 
hey, get to the baseline, get to the spot as fast as you can, you know, get to a position of referee to play. And I always say, slot, stay active. Slot, stay active. On fast breaks, slot has to stay active. And then, you know, when we have three-point teams that shoot three-point uh, a lot, let's say Golden State, we say trail, stay engaged, trail, stay engaged. Slot comes high to help out on the three-pointers. So we talk about certain things, but yes, transition, because our guys are so fast, and hey, we got a lot of older guys on staff that may not get to the baseline. We say we all, the key is get to a point on the floor where you can referee the defender. Get to the point on the floor where you can referee the defender. That is key. Thank you. Thanks for that, Rodney. Any, any questions? We're, we're about to close. Any questions for, for Rodney? You can unmute or add the chat. This has been... Once again, Rodney, thanks again for taking the time to uh, share your knowledge with us. And you too, Martin. Thank you. Oh, no problem. We, you know, we got some other you know, things coming up that's going to be pretty exciting for the group. So we had some, probably some new technologies and some new, uh, uh, I guess, outlooks of training platforms. So we had them coming up pretty soon. Okay. And we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll get out out to you. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, enjoy the last dance tonight so you give you plenty of time to get out there. Take care of yourselves and we'll, we'll see you guys next Sunday, okay? Thanks, Rodney. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rodney. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Take care, guys.